them and to protect them. We ask that you send your spirit upon us. Help us to guide our actions here tonight, to guide the actions of the teachers, the school board. And we pray that our Savior, Jesus Christ, helps us every day of our lives to uphold the responsibility that has been given us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mr. Lord. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call this meeting to order. Gentlemen, would you please check in with your classes? Working, Gail. Yeah. Not working. <coughs> not on record, we're not working. Dead. to take any necessary action to extend Director of Schools Donnie Poston contract for calendar year of June 30th, 2014 through June 30th, 2015. Mr. Lawson, the committee met with Mr. Poston. Do you have anything? Is there any changes that we need to be aware of? The only one thing I remember I forgot to ask in uh, when we're uh, accepting a new contractor going forward with it, he's to submit a, a fiscal. And I didn't ask him about that. So we need to ask him about that, and he needs to do that to make everything official. All the other wording, the, the rest of compensation. The, contract, the only thing that we did discuss was this that he should receive a raise equal to that of the other teachers or the other personnel. In other words, if they get a one and a half percent raise from the state, Mr. Poston is due that too. Okay. Other than that, everything is the same. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion at this time. Mr. Chair, can I make a motion to extend the Poston's contract June 30th? Is there a second? Second. Right. Any further discussion? Mr. Poston, do you feel like your contract was negotiated during that meeting? Not negotiated. What do you mean? Was there anything in that that's in the current contract that you would like to see changed? The only thing that I asked uh, was uh, to write the $5,000 buyout clause show the same courtesy that all the directors of the state get. Well, you kind of explain that just to the board. Year, just the regular year contract. Just a $5,000 buyout clause. That's all the difference. Do you have anything else, Mr. Post? No. Anything else? Uh, I have a few questions here. I, I brought this up last time we were down there at the elementary school. Uh, some people in the audience wasn't down there, but I'll look back to this. And you can comment on it, Mr. Post, if you like. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, you took over 2002, is that correct? 2011. 11. And we started off with a 93.8 attendance rate, now we're down to 90. Graduation rate started out 84, now we're down to 80. ACT Harvard scores, we started out at 18, we're 17.3. Does that sound about right? That's the ones you have, but that's not what we had. I don't have my other stuff with me, but. Uh, once we got off the state website, it's totally different. Than ours. Well, either these are right or wrong, I don't know. I'm glad to turn off. Yeah, the state website. Do you different. know whether they're right or wrong? Most of them are wrong. But you are wrong? Yeah. yeah the, the ones on the state websites are the one we use. Well, 
why is our website different than it, We use the state website. Well, okay. All right, now here's something that Mr. Groffin brought this up before, and I just wanted to see it. And, uh, okay, there was 58 people, this is countywide now, both hospitals. People, uh, 262 surveyed or took this test, and this is English, and 42 ready for college. Is that about right? I don't know. You don't know? No. Uh, science, there were 262 took the test, and there were 11 ready for college. Reading, 262, and there's 29 ready for college. Mathematics, 262, and it's 11% ready for college. I just, I, I, I'd like to have an answer if we could get one. And, and, and all four of these was just, uh, I just don't understand though, yeah, why we're so low down there. And, yeah, well, let me just <laughs> give you uh, the short answer for all of the course. Our scores in every subject area have gone up for the first time in five years. Now, here's the thing. The things, the system we've just been in place, put in place, and part of it is due to the new reforms that the state's got and the nation's got. You're going to see major differences in the years to come if we keep in place what we've got going now. But what and are we going to do to change this right now? I know that's what I'm saying. Keep, keep the, the, the rigor for the uh, curriculum like we've got going. Keep the rigor going. Uh, and uh, and our uh, the accountability system that we've got going now, keep it going. And you'll see some major differences in, in scores. And, in the I, I, hope, I hope we do because the students, we're, we're coming up short on this. I don't know whether the teachers are doing it or what's... I don't understand why we've got such a low rate that deals with the college. And, you know, like we shared with you before, the improvements that we've seen, we came one point being shy of the sixth most improved system in the state. So we do know that the rigor is working. Uh, and we we didn't get where we're at overnight. No, I know that. And you're talking time. about 10, 15, 20, 30 years of, of a... Of a, of a culture that has got to be changed, and we feel like things are in place now that, to make that kind of a difference. And whether whether I'm here, whether I'm not here, calendars come and go. We've got to have a system in place that'll make sure these kids can have a level of success. And I feel like we're on the road there. Well, do you and I feel like part of it's due because we've had good collaboration with with our board. We've had good leadership from our uh, school team. And as long as you keep establishing those parameters for success, you've got to see some success. And will it come overnight? No, we've been surprisingly, we've done surprisingly well considered uh, some things we've gotten to quicker than we expected, especially in the math areas. Uh, a little disappointed some of the reading language scores, but we put so much emphasis on them. all of these things. Now, let me say this, when we're going to get ready to go into the the park testing, which is, is down the road. And our people, we've been in training all last week. We've got people in training right now for the RTIs in the park. And the tension and, and, the, and the pressure that's on our people to come up to these reforms is, is unreal. But they've been they've been coming up to the plate and doing uh, doing their responsibilities and doing do, do different things to try to uh, do what's best for the kids. And I feel like we're on the right path. And like I say, get rid of every one of us on the board up here. But keep that system going, like we got going, where that you, uh, where you see some the curriculum is is improving, uh, the uh, the goals are being are being met, and the leadership teams are, are doing everything they can to see that the schools are operating to quality. And that's that's key, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, but now. Okay, one more thing. Uh, I, 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 I didn't ask for a copy of it. You probably got one. But I'd like to see a copy of your five-year plan that you had in place when you took over up to five years. It's laying on the desk. And mm -hmm. it yes. ends. So we're doing, redoing the new five-year plan. In fact, the state's going to use our model. It's a 2-1-2 two, two plan. We're going to be looking at the two previous years, the one present here, and the two future years. 
and we're going to submit ours by the end of February, if at all possible. I'm not it's coming. not due to May. If it's not. Uh, our, the one, the one, the one we're operating under was done under Dr. Martin, and it, it runs out in, in May. Uh, and every one of those goals that's been listed, we've seen some major improvements in the last year, especially okay. all those goals. I'll be glad. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll, glad to share I'll stop by tomorrow and get me a copy. It's laying out the Appreciate it. Right. That's all I have. Anybody else have anything? If not, we're ready to vote. Uh -huh. Members vote. Right, Rick. No. I need to ask somebody. You said that you did feel like they negotiated or did not negotiate. No, there's no negotiation. It just. And all thing you asked for is a $5,000 higher promise. Yeah, take that. To delete that, yeah. Mr. Rivers, I'm the comedian. I'm certainly no argument for me. I think Mr. Post contested that. So. We'll make that clear. I see one problem. So what's your agreement? What's your agreement to do with the contract? It's like Just like a teacher, yeah. You know, we're going to for a year. Yeah. Standard, standard teacher contract, or I mean standard contract like a teacher gets. Okay, we are voting on the contract as is. Are we ready to vote? All members vote it is. This is on the one year extension, correct, yes, Mr. Chairman? One year extension. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, would you reveal the vote? Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, abstain. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, abstain. Or no. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. I want to say I wasn't voting against Mr. Post and I was voting against the terms of the contract because I think he deserves that clause to be taken out, to be honest about it. Uh, my opinion, just for the opinion of the chair, is that we put that in three years ago basically for outside people that the taxpayers would not have to buy out if they had problems with the superintendent, a two or $300,000 contract that would cause the taxpayers if there was something went wrong. One of my main concerns was when I got elected that we went back to the idea of getting a local person in as our superintendent. As long as we have the superintendent, I think the $5,000 is mute. But at the same time, I think that's a good clause to put in there because if you do experience a problem with the director of schools, why should the taxpayers be responsible to pay out a large contract? That's my opinion, and that's Mr. Orgott. Certainly respect your opinion on that as well. I disagree with you. I don't know. I, 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 I was on the committee that discussed this with Mr. Poe and me and Mr. Ork had a uh, hearty discussion. <laughs> Very hearty. And I was asking please. questions, and Mr. Ork took exception to that. And uh, the uh, part that we're talking about is this. If Mr. Poston was to leave a week from now and we left that in, we'd have to pay him, if we changed it, we'd have to pay him for a whole year. The way it is, if he leaves, we'll pay him $5,000. Now that's, that's, that's what that issue is. No, no, no that's not right. No, it's, the only $5,000 buyout is if the board majority at any time chooses to move or remove the director's schools. If you get a majority of the vote, they can move it. Mr. Poston has a contract for a year. He has a year. If he leaves for medical or any other reason, his contract will be honored. But only when the board chooses to bring a motion up to remove the director schools at any time for a majority of six votes can remove that director for a five thousand dollar buyout clause. That is the okay, clause. I mean, yes. stated. Yes. So that's what I meant. Yes. The fact that if yes. if we want him to leave, yes, or he There's wants to leave, absolutely, or if he does, that's right. Okay. But his contract. Well, we do. Is that not right? Well, it's a one year contract. Yes. But if he wants to leave or we want him to leave, yes. we pay him five thousand dollars. Not if he wants to. Leave. Not if he wants to leave. No. No. No, it's a removal clause. It's a removal clause. For example, Mr. Martin had a three-year contract left on his uh, contract. If we'd have had that in, it could have took a simple majority of six people, six board members on this board, to remove him for $5,000. 
or put him in a position in the school system. That's what it also says. That that person, the director, can take a position in the school system. We felt like that was a good thing at the time. I do respect Mr. Ort's opinion that you know that was then. This is different now. But I just believe it needed to stay in, and that's my position. Does anybody Let me ask you a question. Anything? Just out of, I just want to know when you formed that committee, did you appoint Mr. Lawson's chairman? I didn't appoint anyone okay. as chairman. But that's I didn't say, I Mr. Lawson, would you lead it? So you didn't appoint him as chairman. I didn't appoint anyone because usually that's done by the What's the difference between being the leader and the chairman? <laughs> well, it wasn't okay. specific. Let me say it, that. You, you told me to lead. Right. Let's go on. All right. right. We got yeah. Congratulations. So yes. <laughs> uh, no recognition of guests. Uh, let's, we, have, we have an addendum to add to the regular agenda. Item 8D, consider approving the quality points for physics and AP physics for each semester. You all have that. You can read it. And also 8E, so we'll put that in. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Oh, oh I'm sorry. There's one more. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Jack Cannon, do you have anything? On, uh, do you want us to put something on for the yes, It's for the new student management package. <coughs> Uh, I've got some details for you here. Okay, I have so the, the state's already been the package, but I'll let you know which one we chose. Okay, let's let's put AF as Aspen Student Management, please. Student Management. Yeah, Aspen Student Management. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. For a second. Second. Any discussion? Let's proceed to vote. All those in favor? Vote no yes. No. Opposed. Uh. Mr. Collins, you're not going to vote. Yeah, I'm going to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, we'll build the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Will, yes. Lawson, yes. Orth, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Approval of the regular agenda with those. Motion to approve as amended. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Let's proceed to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, <coughs> yes. Christmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Oric, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Comments from the chair. Uh, would like to acknowledge that uh, next month I've asked Mr. Poston to bring to us if we can be at a five o'clock workshop next month, some items that he expects to request for additional funding in next year's budget based on priority of what he feels like this school system needs. I would encourage each board member to, to talk to Mr. Poston and give him your ideas of where our weaknesses is in funding so that he can bring that to us and present some items that we can work on as the executive committee to work with the finance director and see that we can try to uh, identify some areas that we know need additional funding. Also, we'll be doing Mr. Poston's evaluation in June. The contract says we must evaluate him by June. We have failed to do that the last couple of years. Um, we will get an instrument that everyone agrees to. I think Mr. Poston was a little disappointed with one part of it. Uh, so we'll get that nailed down and have a have a meeting presented before June. Well, now for reference, we just missed one year last year, right? No, we didn't. I got it right here. I don't remember that we did. Six months. Oh, six months. you may be right. Here it is. We, we must have done August the twenty. Yeah. Of 2012. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. My fault. I'll give you the score if you want it. No, I don't think that. I have never done one since I've been on right. the board. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll move. We'll move to do that in June because that's that's a part of the contract we're supposed to do. I'd also like to congratulate the sheriff's department and uh, the staff 
the drug policy that is in for our approval tonight, if it so passes, there's a lot of work went into it. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Poston, Ms. Parks, uh, a lot of collaboration with the Sheriff's Department, and I think it's a good policy and I hope it passes. Um, it's something I think that's evident with some of the events that happened, that have been happening around our schools lately that we definitely need. So hopefully that'll be, be something we can pass a little later on. And also, don't forget Day on the Hill next week. Um, your packets, I think your expense check is on your desk. Don't forget it. And uh, we'll go down and see those that are going next week on the, on Tuesday, I think. So that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Poston, Director of uh, Just briefly, let me uh, uh, thank the Board for the confidence and um, allow me to serve another year. And, and uh, I certainly... I'll do my best to keep the kids first in this in this county. Uh, last few days, last week, we were in Nashville with um, uh, directors from all over the state and very intense uh, sessions every day, uh, dealing with uh, several of the speakers uh, or, or people from the legislature. The governor spoke with us, the commissioner spoke with us, and then again met with the commissioner again on Friday regarding some of the new initiatives and reforms that we're, we're involved in. And the two main things, I, I gave our board a little definition of um, it's the two most asked questions being asked by parents and the general public. And I'm not going to go into a big lengthy definition, just share with you what I've got here in my notes. But what are the common core standards and what is PARC, P-A-R-C-C? And the common core standards, it's a set of expectations for students performance in math and English, language, art, and literacy. And 46 states and the District of Columbia have adopted the Common Core Standards to be able to hold common expectations for the core subject areas. Of course, our people were was involved in, in the training for the, uh, the rollout of the Common Core the last two years, quite an intensive training. And we're seeing some, uh, now the people are getting pretty much used to uh, the new curriculum and and what it has to offer and, and our hopes for the kids with this curriculum. Uh, but uh, the ten Tennessee adopted the Common Core Standards for English Language Arts back in 2010. And those standards are three areas that they provide. They provide uh, clear expectations aligned to the expectations of colleges and careers. It's like years ago they come out with this uh, program about career awareness down in the in even as low as uh, kindergarten first grade it's it's that mentality that we're trying to pass on to our kids preparing yourself at an early age to be college and career ready and also promotes consistency by ensuring all students no matter where they live in the united states that they are well prepared with the skills and knowledge necessary to collaborate and compete with their peers in the united states of course and abroad and you know yourself the competition between the United States and the other countries academically and a lot of things that are said. But this is digging down deep into the core subjects that's needed to help our kids to be ready. And then also it enables collaboration between states to support improvement in student success. The hard part of this of the Reform Act that most of us are having difficulty with has to do with what's called the PARC, P-A-R-C-C. -C. That's the Partnership of Assessment of readiness for college and careers. It's the name of the assessment that, that's been given to the assessment. And this was a, it was a consortium of states working together to develop this common set of standards for grades K, uh, 3 through 12. Uh, and the, those assessments are only in English and math. That they're also anchored in what, uh, what it takes to be ready for college and careers like the common core subjects are. And Tennessee joined the partnership for the assessment of readiness for college and careers back in 2012 uh, to develop those new assessments that are aligned align to the Common Core. And each state still has its individual autonomy as far as that goes. And schools in Tennessee are piloting this spring some of the park test assessments. And so we'll be getting more information. And now let me say this. Some of the AMOs, as we know it, this will be your last year for some of those scores. You're going to have three basic years of data gathering that you're not going to get a lot of the information that you normally expect because these next three years from the testing that is coming by uh, coming through all of the schools all the states will be to establish some of those basic standards but beginning in 2014-15 school year the park assessments 
and math and English language uh, will replace the achievement test as we know it and the end of course math and the English language arts assessments as we know it. So PARC will be a part of this Tennessee Comprehensive Assessment Program, which we call the TCAP program in grades, uh, grades 3 through 12. So this is just a basic, brief uh, definition of those two things, but lots of parents are saying, what does PARC mean? What does Common Core? And, this, and, and the, we were given a manual uh, last week, and it's that thick, and they covered the entire manual with us on the PARC. It's very detailed. If any of you want to come by and look at it and, and, and some of the uh, some of the different aspects of what we're going to be uh, sharing with our schools and our our people will be going to train over the next several months. The other, uh, our principals, our, our team leaders, we got a group in Nashville now uh, working on the park EIs, that's response to intervention training, and, and some of the park uh, uh, training also. But we're going to be seeing more and more uh, training sessions coming up, and especially next summer. And uh, our uh, our teachers, our school leadership teams, will be having an opportunity to be uh, brought in on that. One of the things we've got to try to do is to try to uh, uh, de-escalate any of the tension that may come about because of of some of the park. The state's looking at the at the level of testing that's taking place now, and they're they're talking about maybe re redoing and rethinking some of the things that they're that they're doing. And maybe maybe backing off some on some of the major testing requirements because they don't want to become uh, people to become too te with too much test anxiety because of too much test. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't want to have any questions for Mr. Poston. Mr. Poston, I'd like to ask one question real quickly. Uh, in the park testing, is that testing the part that requires all elementary, even elementary kids, that they use the keyboarding on the computer? Okay. Uh, that is part of the that's part of the park test. However, a school uh, for the first five years they can opt out of doing the uh, doing the electronic test and go the manual, and, and the state will pick up the cost of that. But they're encouraging all the all the tech ready schools to go ahead uh, and and do their testing with with. Technology. Are we prepared for that? Uh, we're we're getting there. We're, 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 let me say this: we're better prepared than most. Okay. And Jack has done an outstanding job of bringing our schools uh, ready for the, this, this technology. Okay. And we had some experiences this past week with some of the writing tests, and it, it kind of scared some of our people because uh, their computers all of a sudden quit working. What happened? Guess what? The state. state. The state server went down, and so it was a blessing to them from the standpoint that now that they have several different options, that they they were able to take this incident, look at it, and study on what they need to do in case this happens again, especially when they move into the park. So they're taking this, uh, using this for their additional training. So they got it back up and running. The kids' work was saved, and so the writing tests were completed. Now that was the that was the middle schools that done that, or was that the middle school and the high school and yeah, we had some different grade levels in the third. Okay, it's too early to know how they did, yeah. right? Okay. Who uh, who evaluates those writing tests now? It'll be at some of the, the state groups that where this is going. Well, they used to ship back these uh, UT. Uh, they used to put them down to the prison prisoners and let those people in prison evaluate the written test. We're not still doing that, are we? I hope not. Well, no, we didn't do that. Now, this will all be done, but groups are in Nashville, I'm sure. Or it might be on some okay. Nashville, some of the Nashville level. Okay. Mr. Barlow. Sir, um, the financial reports are in your packet there. Quick review of those. For the period ending December 31st, 2013, beginning with the general purpose school fund, cash with the trustee of $7.85 million. Come over a couple pages, you'll see the revenue production <coughs> at 51% through the first six months. And that in comparison to the appropriation utilization on the next page of 47%, so four percentage points for the good through uh, the first six months of the 13-14 fiscal year. In the 142 Federal Project School Fund, cash with trustee of 378000 which means we're into our $500,000, uh, 180 dollars 
uh, revenues 42.3 percent expenditures 42.2 percent in alignment with each other and then our cafeteria fund through December 31st $614,000 cash with trustee revenues 48.1 percent and expenditures 48.4 percent so we're uh, almost in perfect alignment inside the cafeteria fund uh, mostly due to half of the transfer being uh, sent over to align those funds like we talked about last month. So looks like that uh, for at least the first six months of the year, we're in balance with uh, the cafeteria fund. We'll know more as we go forward, but it's a much better picture than it was two months ago. Uh, any questions you have about those, I'll gladly answer. If not, I need to get a motion to accept those reports. I make a motion we accept and is approved. Second. Motion and second. Any more discussion? Let's proceed to vote. <clears throat> Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Warwick, yes. Parker, yes. Winford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion has. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, before we leave the financial data, I, wanted to, I sent out to you guys by email this afternoon the uh, update on the solar panels. Yeah. And even with the uh, terrible weather that we've had for the last uh, month and a half, we are still a little bit ahead through the uh, month of February in our uh, um, estimates, uh, 21,352 uh, kilowatt hours uh, uh, to the good. Four, we produced 467,000 as opposed to estimating 445,000 on the uh, kilowatt hour production. And in the form of money, $105,000 compared to the 101 that we thought. So still 5,000 <laughs> through that. And hopefully get some better weather ahead. So looks pretty good through February. I thought I'd share that with you. Moving on to the uh, uh, budget amendments, we have um, a total of seven budget amendments. Uh, one, two, three in the general purpose school fund. One, two, three, four in the federal project school fund. Uh, I'll gladly go over any of those in any individual capacity or a motion to approve all or whatever you wish to do. Uh, for the chair's part, I would like to have resolution 2 3 pulled out uh, if we could. And then I'll entertain a motion to approve the others or if there's any that needs to be pulled out. Motion to approve 2-1 through 2-7 with the exception of 2-3 being pulled out. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Let's proceed to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? <coughs> Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Warwick, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Mr. Marlowe, could you explain resolution 2-3, please? Yeah, hang on a second. Okay, 2-3 uh, is a realignment amendment in the general purpose school fund predominantly for three vocational teachers being realigned from regular program to uh, vocational program. Uh, also includes uh, a minor change in secretaries of $9,000 uh, and benefits associated with same and the vocational teacher realignment includes benefits associated with same and the uh, reductions are associated with the decreases in the regular program increase in voc ed and uh, predominantly medical insurance realignments associated with the secretarial change. Mr. Postum, could you explain the uh, the needed nine thousand for the secretaries in this resolution? Okay, we have uh, have one lady at Jellicoe that was. Uh, 
serving as she serves as a teaching assistant for the alternative school and also the high school was needing some additional help in the office there and she's been trying to fill dual role, roles there and um, and so I think it's a total of forty some hundred dollars to uh, up her salary there and so we we put her in as one of the high school secretaries. How long has she been working in the office? She's, I know back a couple, three months ago when we went through all of the uh, realignments and everything, I asked, I said, let's make sure that everybody's in the, in the proper uh, category. And we, we had a lot of the basic skills that were placed from basic skills in the federal and vice versa. And, and she was in the, kept it out in the office out of need more than anything pretty much uh, most of the year, I guess. And that happens. Um, Don't uh, we have a tremendous need for other secretaries absolutely. and other schools with a handle a lot more money and a lot more activity funds in other schools, at which point the auditor's report have scolded us every year that we should delegate those, those absolutely. responsibilities? Yeah. In fact, I think that's something that we need to respond to. Uh, look at and we start our budgetary process. We've got two or three reasons because of delegation, of separation of delegation of powers right. when it comes to the money, but also the safety. Uh, um, and there's more and more demands. You know, years ago, elementary schools didn't have restrictive accounts. Uh, and I like the high schools, they're bombarded by several different restrictive accounts. Now, the elementary schools. Are, are, they're getting to be the same mold with that. Um, of course, and to me, it's, it's as much as a safety thing as anything. But if you separate the, the duties, or one one is taking the money in, the other is expending, I think we get by and fake it probably address this better than me. Uh, uh, that, would, that would do the separation of powers and get us and, 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 and really, truly, and I'll say, Glowingly, Faye has done a fantastic job with uh, with uh, with our books this year, and, and our auditors are speaking very highly of, of where we've come in our individual school accounts, and and saying they're going to. Do, but there's always this one exception: separation of duties. And about the only way that you can even do that would be to have an additional person uh, helping uh, the bookkeeper. And, stuff. and I want to be clear: I'm not against. Uh, the lady helping out in the office. I'm sure they needed it, Jellico. I want to be clear, but we have that same need, even in a greater need, probably in some of the schools over here on this side. And I think that there is some situations where Title I assistants are being used in the office, which, in my opinion, what I've learned violates their duties. Is that not right, Mr. Absolutely. So, I mean, for us to be putting Title I aides in the office to answer telephone and to help out, and we know we shouldn't be doing that, and yet we're turning around and appropriating money across the mountain, which, again, Mr. Collins, I'm not picking on Jellico, but I just think it needs to be more evenly across the board. If we're going to do something, we ought to do it for all the schools that are in need and not just at one. Mr. I, have a, I have a question. Mr. Postman, mm -hmm. uh, the lady goes to uh, alternative school. Who takes her place in the office? Well, see, you've got the two ladies that are serving there in the office. And so if there's a girl that has to go to the alternative school, she goes with her. And, so, and they use some of those students in the library. They're, in, they're, not out the, they're not out there all day long in that one group. She only has to go when there's a girl that's placed in the alternative school. And how much are we paying her now? Um, what's up to you? As an aide, you mean? Uh, she to bring her salary. She was making. I'm, what's the question? What's the new salary for the secretary? Uh, hang on, I'll tell you. The I'm baseline. She worked in alternative school. Um, she was their regular school learner. Well, how's she going to do two jobs? She only she goes if there's a girl. Well, okay, how much is she being paid for to work in the alternative school? Roughly $12,000 a year. She's been paying a year's wage like every other assistant. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now we're going to come along here and give her an $8,000 raise? 
and let her do double duty. Well, okay, if we don't need her in the alternative school, why have we got her down there? But well, she only goes if a girl has to go out. Well, you mean we'll pay her $12,000 just part-time? She'll only go out there if that girl has to go out there. So. And see, well, most of the time they'll come into the library. I don't understand. Is she uh, in the alternative school? Is she an assistant? She would be an assistant. What well, is she name? She doesn't have to go out there right now. There's no girl out there. Well, why were you paying her if she didn't have to go out there? She was working in the office and helping, helping in the school. With the okay, school. now what are you doing? Are you still paying her the 12 and the 8? We're, we just changed the salary. Okay, it's now listen. Now we've got other secretaries. I agree. We've been, been working 20 years and making less than this girl's fiction to make. Now that kind of business is not right. No, the, that part's not correct. Well, what is correct? That's what I'm trying to find out. Here, how much does she pay as an, pay as an assistant? Just hold on a second, okay? Okay. All right. Here's what I believe. Don't give me one of them long ranges. Just I'm, tell me what she makes as an assistant. I'm trying to help you out. I don't want you to explain. You give me the 30 minute answer. I'm not going to give you 30 understand. minutes. I just hold still. Okay, how much she make? Just hold still. Uh, here's my understanding. She is being worked as a secretary, although she is being paid as an aide. And the secretary pay would be exactly what everybody else's secretary pay would be. She would receive no she, greater. We've, we've got a step-by-step -step plan. We got right, exactly. Now, now where's she going to get this other $8,000? It's in this budget amendment right here to fund it to change her from what her pay was as an aide to the regular secretary scale. That difference. How many she, years she been working? Um, hang on, I'll be able to have that information. One year. Uh, two. Two, two years. <coughs> Miss Kine that works out in front of the central office over there don't make that much. Oh, yes, she does. And, uh, okay, how much does the secretary all we'll say at any of the other schools? What do they make? All secretaries are paid on the scale, Eugene. Okay, what is the scale? Um, give you an example. A 12 month secretary, um, and I don't have the years of. Well, she's not 12 months. I'm, I'm just trying to give you an example here. Um, a 10 month secretary, and I'll just say this lady's name because I don't know how long, long she's been here or not. It's uh, Robin Benetton, and she makes like $21,060. How long has she been working? I'm going to guess probably four years, five years, based upon the figures I see compared. And a 10-month secretary with two years of experience to make $20,700. So that's for 10 months? <clears throat> that's for 10 months. 12-month secretary would make um, roughly 10%. 15% more than that, so another $2,500 okay. if it was 12 months. So they all make roughly, just say they make $21,000 if you're a 10 month. Okay, one reason I'm asking this, I made a question about this. How many students they got at Jellico High School? Oh, I don't have any. Idea. Well, about 380, ain't they? I don't know. Well, they got 650 down at Carroll, and they can't get one even for 15 minutes. That's what I'm fussed about, and the, pr the principal down there has been asking for several, for a year or two, to try to get a receptionist down there, and she's got 650 kids down there, and they've got 380. Now, show me the justification here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the, from where I'm sitting at... You're the bookkeeper. He's the one who makes the decision, or I'll be. Does anybody else have any else on this? I'd just like to possibly we'll have some items for action next month on this uh, to maybe help these other schools. Mr. Chairman, uh, what I would uh, recommend is if you have situations similar where that people are in fact working in a position, they need to be paid commensurate with the position that they are actually working in. I agree 100%. Not call them 
uh, a ball if they're a square. But where this come into effect, to be honest, is when all of the teacher's assistants were put on Title I. That did not happen. That hurt. That's hurt. what I'm hearing from that, Mr. Bowles. That, that has nothing to do with well, what, we're, what we're discussing here. Well, uh, I can assure you it doesn't. It, uh, the basic skills you could, you could they, from what they tell me, you could tell a teacher's aide to do different things. Well, you, you but, could as it relates to being an aide. All I'm trying to say is if you have a problem, what we really need to do is figure out the length and breadth of your problem and then actually correct it. If you're going to have uh, a secretary like Eugene's talking about at um, Carroll Elementary School, and if you've got an aide working as a secretary at Carroll Elementary School present, that would mean exactly what you just said a second ago about the same thing at the alternative aid in Jellico. They really aren't performing aid functions because they're performing secretary functions. And if they're performing secretary functions, they specifically need to be paid as secretaries. And they certainly don't need to be paid using or attempting to use federal Title I monies. We need to figure out exactly what those things are and fix them. Just simply fix them. I agree. And I think Mr. Post yeah. is aware of that now. Yeah. And yeah. you're going to yeah, and, and I'll bring you back, if somebody will get that information to me, I'll bring you back a budget amendment next month to okay. fix it. Well, Jeff, you, those things ought to be figured out before they come before the board. I agree, but I you didn't really think tell, about okay, them. Okay, we ought to know what we're voting on. Now, you bring this before us, and we didn't know a thing about it. And then I go back down there, and they say, we've been trying to get us reception now for two years. Why don't you help us? Okay, we didn't know a thing in the world about this. Me neither. All right, that's not right. Mr. If Collins. you ask me to vote on something, I ought to know what I'm voting on. Did you have to? <coughs> and then we'll move on. I just don't understand. She's working in the office. That she needs the job time. Now, what's her time? Is she uh, an aide down to the uh, alternative school, or is she a reception at the high school? She's secretary. She's on the scale as a secretary. So she won't be doing any work if we pass this amendment as a alternative aid. Correct. That is right. What will her salary be if we pass this? Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand. So you're saying no. She's Correct. moving from an alternative aid to uh, secretary. To secretary. Now the cold key here is. If that principal tells her to go down to the alternative school and work with one kid, we're never going to know about that. No. But no or if no, a principal no. over here at XY school says, would you come in in the morning and stand here for two hours and answer the phone because the bookkeeper needs to do some work, we're never going to know about that unless they courage enough to tell us. That's what's wrong with the system. They're not utilizing the assistants in the right way. They're taking advantage of them, and they are putting them in positions that they shouldn't be in, and they're definitely not getting paid for them. Mr. Marlowe, I've got one question. And that's exactly the truth. I, I, I got, sorry, before you ask me one question. One thing, Rector, that also is a possibility, although you try to stay away from this, we do have at least one situation I know that's similar to this. If, in fact, you really wanted... Uh, and I'm not encouraging you to do this, but if in fact you really wanted to, you could have secretary slash aides and pay them on two different pay rates relative to the duties that they perform. Uh, all that the law requires is that we pay them what they're due in relation to what the function they perform if you have a scale. Okay, well, one, one quick question. If you had an aide say it at X school, yeah. That is, all the aides are classified as Title I. They say there is a rule that if one aide does one thing, all four of them or all of them has to do the same thing. I know of no such rule, but okay. I, 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 you know, I'm not talking about okay. if you had uh, an aide that was work as an aide on Monday and worked as a secretary on Tuesday and worked as an aide on Wednesday and worked as a Very secretary on Thursday and worked right. as an aide on Friday, then you would pay I think, them. I think this would be a, a good way. discussion to where we might be able to get down to the bottom of it to where we get these yeah. people. Now, what was your friends. question, Sergeant? You've got the scale now, right? I, I've got pieces of it. I don't have okay, the whole thing. Let's just say for a two-year uh, secretary. Yeah. Starting out two years. Twenty thousand seven hundred, like I said. That's twenty thousand seven hundred dollars starting out. That's correct. Okay. 
Okay. Just to recap. Now, so, it's about four years. How much is it? It would go up probably about. I'm going to. Get, I don't have that right in front of me, but I, my guess is about five hundred dollars to six fifty would be the ordinarily step. So she might go to twenty one thousand dollars, and when she gets to three, and it just keeps right on going. So they have. So if they have step up raises for them, is that what you're saying? Yes, it, as part of the scale, you have a, a base zero year all the way down through twenty, and they get like small steps. I don't know if it. I'll say three hundred fifty. Hundred dollars, four twenty-five, five hundred dollars, about that on down the line. I think the custodians are paid step up rates that they used to be. I don't know. Really the custodians are on a scale. The only people that work for you guys that I'm aware of that are quote unquote not on the scale is maintenance. I don't believe there's a maintenance scale. I think the maintenance pay is basically uniform. But I'm not. Don't hold me. That it's been a while since I looked at it. The chair will entertain a motion on resolution two three. Now keep in mind. The resolution says this is to reclassify teachers into the realignment to Bo Ed, but you will be voting for a raise in this amendment for this lady, Angelica. For a position change. For a position change. Okay. Okay, now let's ask a question about taking now you're you're changing three teachers from the regular program into the vocational program. How do their duties change? See, these are positions that uh, uh, even Chris Stepney, the uh, controller, told us a long time ago we should have been should have been placed into the vocational program. And so we've done what the other systems have done. We these people were doing vocational type <coughs> classes. We just identified them as such. I think it's exactly the same thing as the discussion we just had, Eugene, about the aide versus the secretary. These people were already vocational they teachers. Well, why weren't they being paid out of vocational money? Very, very good question. They weren't classified as vocational. See, you go up there and you have a man working in the shop. He does, his equipment ain't up to date. We ain't got no money to give him anything to work with. But are we taking money out of the vocational program now and paying these people? No. Actually, the exact opposite. You're going out, you're taking regular program money and paying vocational teachers. And putting them in now. But our vocational program don't have enough money to pay for all the teachers we've got. No. Okay, I just want to know what. Uh, if it's budgeted for vocational, it ought to go for vocational. And you're actually and increasing the budget. If it's budgeted for the regular okay. program, it ought to go to regular program for the money. And, and that's what I'm trying to get straight. Unless, in this example, for that the teacher was actually a vocational teacher classified in the regular program appropriations and now those appropriations are being reduced in regular program and the increased in voc ed because those teachers really need to be called what they are voc ed that's what i'm saying call them what they are and pay them what you're supposed to pay them i agree 100 percent screwing them okay. around here no, no, that that we just, don't know what's going on i believe i support eugene's comment a thousand percent is that the state who sets what they make Mr. Wilson, what? Is that the state that sets what they make? Is that where the money comes from to pay them? Uh, well, I don't, want you, I, I don't want you to confuse earnings with spending. The state the Board of Education approves a pay scale, and the local Board of Education adopts a pay scale as well. But there isn't any real comparability as uh, you guys had this conversation last month and month before that uh, as well about um, nurses. There isn't enough positions earned in the VEP formula to equate to the number of positions that you actually employ. I got you. So you couldn't say that the state dictates for exactly how much you pay any individual. They just simply tell you how much money you're going to earn for a specific thing. That doesn't mean you have to spend it for those okay. specific things. All right. Mr. Collins, and then we'll move on. Mr. Postman, we, uh, when you've done away with uh, Ms. Rodner's position, she had a secretary. Who she work for now? She still does the vocational paperwork. Mr. Knight. Yes, Mr. Mr. Knight, first, her supervisor. Mr. Knight, her supervisor. Okay, thank you. Okay, any more discussion? Let's proceed to vote. <laughs> I 
I, I, I'm, I, I'm lost here. I'm just okay. I'm honest. Would you like some clarification? Yes, please, the chair? please. You are voting on a budget resolution that aligns the pay for from vocation, regular ed teachers three to vocational teachers, okay? Okay. And you are also voting for a raise and a new classification for a assistant at Jellicoe High School to be put in the office, and she will be making about 8000 more a year. I don't know. Yeah. So that's what you'll be voting for if you vote yes. And what are the ramifications if it's voted if, <coughs> with, the CT, with the CTE or the real line? You would have to redo the amendment, wouldn't you, Mr. Marlowe, if it fails? If, this budget, if, if your budget amendment fails, we'd have to do a, an, an additional amendment. Could we to, do that uh, executive action and then bring it back next month? Oh, yeah, the budget amendment isn't critical about, I guess, it, and I don't mean to sound this so badly, the fact that these people are vocational teachers doesn't change whether they're called a uh, regular program. Whether we pass this amendment or not, those things are already transpired, and we'll just have I don't to think eventually anyone sort out. Objects to that part of this amendment. Say it again. I don't think anyone objects to that part of the amendment. I believe it's the other part. It also would be what I just said would be very similar to the secretary situation. Uh, what you call them doesn't necessarily matter in what you have to pay them. Okay. Is everybody ready to vote? Mr. Lawson? Yeah. It's not locked in. Oh, y'all done voting. <laughs> no, it's a vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Uh, 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 uh. Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. <clears throat> Miller, no. Burge, no. Collins, no. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, no. Warwick, yes. Parker, no. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, no. No. Motion. Okay. Mr. Marlowe. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> On to uh, the bids. We have uh, bids for um, both cellular phone service and um, long distance service. The um, bids for the cellular service were solicited for on the 13th day of December, received and opened on the 23rd day of January. The bidders are Verizon Wireless, $28.84 per line, U.S. Cellular, $30 uh, per line, uh, AT&T, $49.61 per line. Recommendation is to Verizon, Verizon Wireless, at $28.84 per line at the lowest and best bid to meet the specification. Also, the recommendation of Mr. Cannon, the technology coordinator. What's the pleasure of the board? I'll make a motion we accept. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Let's proceed to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Warwick, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion passed. Uh, the next item, Mr. Chairman, is for the local and long distance service. Uh, it's listed for on the 13th of December again, received and open on the 23rd of February, uh, January. Uh, AT&T is the only bidder, $30.97 per line. Recommendation is to AT&T is the only bidder. Also, the recommendation of Mr. Cannon, the technology coordinator. What's the pleasure of the board? I'll move it. Second. Second. Any discussion? Let's proceed to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creek Court, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Warwick, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, there are no uh, uh, items to request permission to advertise for bids. Um, <coughs> no uh, contracts for to be accepted or uh, renewed. So you're down to Miss Faye. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. You're welcome, sir. Ms. Calder. Three 
questions at this time on the December report? Yes, sir. Oh, well, I don't know about the report. Uh, can we ask other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Can you tell me how much money <coughs> goes to the basketball program at Camel County High School out of all that money? Is there any way that you can tell me that, or do you have... The gate receipts. Mm -hmm. uh, our gate receipts go into the general athletic program. Okay. Uh, out of the receipts, uh, the athletic director one year will buy uniforms for the girls next year. If the boys, she does buy the varsity shoes. Uh, if they need something, uh, the postal goes to the <coughs> They'll discuss it, and she does provide most of their needs. Okay. Uh, that's between the coach and the athletic director. Okay. Now, we all know that the football program, program probably gets the bulk of the money. Nine. Is that not the thing? Yes. So the rest of the money is split between the basketball, baseball, soccer, fishing, golf? Or... No, sir. No. No. Concessions. Basketball yeah. concessions only. Basketball concessions are split between... During the basketball season, the concession stand is operated by eight or nine groups. Okay. Soccer, track, golf, cross country. Okay. At the end of the season, when all the bills are paid, um, the profit is divided between each group okay. that worked That's there. participated. Last year, I think the profit may have a, amounted to maybe seven hundred something dollars. Okay. This year, just an estimate. I'm still waiting on some invoices. It looks like the profit may be three hundred dollars for each okay. group. Okay. It really depends. Okay. The so, general, the receipt money, the gate money, going into the general athletic program, that is spent on. Um, Transportation, bus drivers, fuel. Now, for example, if the cross country team uses the bus, uh, the cross country team will provide and pay for their own fuel, their own bus driver. But now, if the bus needs a repair, last year we spent over $5,000 on bus repairs. The general athletic account had to pay for those okay. bus repairs. I wasn't questioning you. I was just no, trying to no, understand something. No, that's all. But you know, yeah. if you ask. And uh, let's see. I had one more. Uh, so, the, so the fishing coach would have to come up and work a concession stand if he wanted part of that money. If he wanted part of it, he didn't do that. This he year. didn't do that. No. Okay, so he needs to do that. If he wants part of it, okay. yes. He... Uh, so that, that's usually available to the athletic. Uh, as a golf coach, he can do it for golf. But not as fishing. Not as the fishing. Okay. So, well, our, our basketball coach is going over to UT and working games over there to make money. That's a good fundraiser. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But to me, that just seems like we should have enough money to pay for that. But evidently, we don't, and they do that, and that's good, and everybody likes to yes. do it or something. But yeah. it just seems to me like he shouldn't have to spend his time over there doing that anyway. <laughs> Have looks nice and thank you for your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to understand, that's all. Uh, well, you don't know unless you ask. <laughs> but no question is a dumb question if you don't know the answer. There you go. Ms. Collins, just one quick yes, question. Uh, <laughs> when we receive these reports now, which has been a great thing, is there any way we can get them to put in there what they're actually spending on their copier bills? Because you can't follow each report. Because I think it's in different line items, isn't it? It's it some is. of them's in operation and maintenance, and some of them is in contract services. Well, is that not right? Can we get that to where it's a little bit more clear as yes. to what each school is paying? The majority of them, Mr. Miller, are either paying for those out of instructional equipment or administrative equipment. For example, at my school, mine comes from instructional equipment because my two copiers are used 95% by the copiers, uh, by the teachers for the copying. At a smaller school, some of those teachers had purchased a small desktop copier with the VEP funds. So the copier in the office may be paid for with administrative equipment money. At Valley View, she was paying hers from a contracted service because it was under a lease agreement. That's the way she paid for it for years. That lease agreement ended in December. 
spoke with her yesterday. They renewed a lease agreement January the 9th of this year. She is going to start paying for that as of, uh, out of instructional equipment as of this month. Mr. Marlow, have you seen that contract? No, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you guys have been advised, at least it is my limited understanding, that leases are different than everything else that we deal with, and a lease that is going to be signed by a principal at a school or a sponsor for a restricted account at a school is not a legitimate lease agreement to be entered because both the Campbell County Board of Education and the Campbell County Commission would have to approve a lease. And the reason that that's specific in the language of the statutes is because leases are extensions beyond the current fiscal term and only the uh, Board of Education in working in unison with the County Commission can commit funds beyond the end of a current year. Now, I'll, some of the documents that are out there in the individual schools are supposedly inclusive of termination clauses that would say that although it says we're doing this for five years and 60 months, then uh, we can terminate this uh, if in fact there is no um, sufficient, there's not sufficient revenue to allow for its continuation. Uh, that language doesn't get you around the requirements to have those documents approved by the Board of Education and the County Commission. And uh, I've had numerous discussions uh, a couple years ago with uh, people in the central office about trying to get that information out to the principals and uh, uh, obviously it's not working. Mr. Poston, I think it's I require your attention on that. Um, anybody else have anything? Yes, I do. Mr. Comer, I'm sorry I didn't mean anything bad about that statement. I'm sorry. I just noticed that you <laughs> <laughs> It just gets worse. I didn't mean anything bad. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <Ms>. Comer. <laughs> okay, items for action. Nothing at this time. Nothing at this time. I don't think that's right. <laughs> Uh, what you said. Consider approving Campbell County Board of Education drug free workplace policy first reading. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve. My second. Second. Any discussion? Just one question. Did we get the attorney to look at this? Yes, we did. He was involved very, very. I mean, we ain't got no. No, no. It was no, reviewed at his office for days. They also had a conference call. It's very well tested. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is this random testing? I see you talking about. Excuse me? Is this be a random test? No, no, it's not a random test. In the state of Tennessee, you cannot randomly test. But what it does is this gives the principals the ability that if they suspect someone is on uh, alcohol uh, or substance abuse, they can notify Miss Lay who is the acting head of human resources at the Board of Education. They can then contact the DRE, which is the drug recognition expert at the Sheriff's Department. At that time, they will go to the site and they will give them a test. And if they refuse to take that test, it is insubordination. Now, one thing that has to be done that Mr. Postum will have to make clear is after this is passed, Every employee has to have a copy of this policy. They have to be made aware that this policy exists. So therefore they will have to be that undertaking will have to take place. One other important item, at this point in time we don't require a drug test to be hired at the Board of Education other than the bus drivers. When you pass this policy, everyone will have to take a drug test to be hired by the Board of Education. So it's a step in the right direction. It's it's 90%, I will tell you, in, in accordance with Knox County's drug policy. The Tennessee School Board Association recommended us to go there because it has been tried in the courts. 
They have been in court over it, and they've won. So it's a very good policy. Anything else? So let's proceed to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Oric, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Before you move on, uh, on this item, uh, the uh, uh, testing for pre-employment? The, uh, they have to pay. They have to pay as much as yes. yeah. I just want to get that in the record. Absolutely. And we have a close by lab that's participating in the policy. I understand. Uh, consider approving 2014-2015 school year calendar. Everyone got a calendar. Mr. Posted, I just have one thing to ask in that. I notice you have the high school kids next year, the graduating seniors coming back after Memorial Day. Absolutely. Please, and I hope that you all, Mr. Knifer, we've had this conversation. You Hopefully you'll have that in place this year, that there is some incentives, for lack of a better word, for those kids to be at school. Yes, sir. We'll get that so, out. Because Memorial Day weekend, I, I, I think you all are making, you're, you're asking for a miracle to get a lot of kids back after that to come back and stay till that following weekend. Does this solve the payroll issue that we had this past year? Yes. It does with the uh, teachers, uh, for sure. I'm not sure about all the other things we haven't a chance to evaluate. Tomorrow, as I understand, the central office is supposed to provide me with the start times for the other associated paydays, but I'll, uh, I can tell you for the teachers it does. Jeff, like this past year, I've got a lot of complaints about where they got paid. They think they were shorted. Yeah. So I didn't know. I don't know how to explain that. It's a, um, it can be somewhat of a confusion thing or in that um, your employees who receive 26 paychecks uh, incorrectly view that 26 checks are linked in time across multiple physical terms. And uh, specifically like for a teacher, they work a 200 day contract and that 200 day contract begins and ends sometime between July 1st and June 30th. The fact that there are 26 allotments of pay is not germane to the 200 days that they work. Um, other than they have to work at least seven days at the beginning of a cycle in order to receive a paycheck equal to 126. Seven two hundreds as a fraction is roughly equivalent to 126 as a fraction. And we can't pay them in advance. So the problem happens as, as time rolls around, uh, this year, Friday the 10th, next year it's going to be Friday the 11th and next year, Friday the 12th. And as time passes, it gets out of rotation because the uh, 364 days is not actually 365.25. So after about five years to seven years, then those people who are plotting their checks of, I want to get one every Friday, soon realize that the uh, 26 isn't going to happen like that. The 126 isn't going to happen like that. And no, to answer your question shortly, they all receive 100% of their pay within the period July 1st through June 30th of every year. It's just when do they get their first check in relation to how many days did they work before they got their first check? I, I and they have to work. The uh, and yeah. you have to work before you can get paid. I think that's with, what the problem yeah, is. yeah, it really is. Yeah. Motion to approve the 14 15 yes. Is there a second? A second the motion. Any more discussion? Let's proceed to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Verge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. 
Orrick, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion passed. Consider approving restrooms, concession stand bleachers, and press box at Jellicoe Elementary School. Mr. Collins. put that on there, Mr. Miller. I believe Mr. Poston and Mr. Bruce went over there last year, I believe it was February. They got prices and whatever. I know the prices are changed. So I didn't bring them in with me. <clears throat> but I would appreciate it. But it's not for me, it's for the kids over there. Mr. Poston, mm -hmm. what do you recommend in this? Well, let me, uh, I've got the prices in, that uh, have quoted to us from the people that met with Mr. Johnny, give you an idea. On the bleachers, they gave us three uh, prices on three style of bleachers, uh, and they range from sixty-two thousand to eighty-one thousand. How much was it? Sixty-two thousand to eighty-one thousand. Sixty-two five to eighty-one five. There's three different styles here uh, or sizes. Uh, the press box layout, two different sizes were quoted. Uh, it was 45500 and 49500 uh, Installation of the stands uh, ranged from 13000 to 20000 That's the installation of the features. And the installation of the press box range from uh, 3,500 to 4,000. Uh, this is, does not include site work. And the field post, field goal post uh, installation it's separate, but a field post for $58.99, that's $5,900. Does any of these quotes have the concession stand in it? Does, does yes. It? No, not the concession no. stand, just the... So the concession stand and the restrooms are not in your... Let's see if I've got your living. I thought he said the concession stand was from forty five to 50000 well, That's press the box. box. Press box. Uh, the scoreboards... Uh, 13,335. What was that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. 13,335 for the scoreboards and receivers, controls, etc. Installation is separate. Um, And the lighting for the field is uh, between 95000 and 105000 We're not worried about the lighting right now. I believe it's more than to be uh, play with the daylight. Uh, with Without the concession stand, you're right at 170000 Yeah. Without the concession stand, it would now, keep in mind, Mr. Marlowe, who brought this up, and I'm aware of it too, that there's a lot of drainage issues. <coughs> so, regardless of what they do, they'll have to do some some design work in order to get that plumbing and stuff up there from what Mr. Marlowe had said. And before Any other we vote discussion? on this, just remember, we paid $386,000 for it. Jack Pearl Middle School bleachers when we put those in there. How much was the field house we just put in up there at Jill Coel Wasn't it about? It was 485000 and we did 40000 on the bathrooms additional. Where do you estimate the income of the revenue is going to come from? We don't have that. Now. We don't have that. I'm still in, uh, a little behind the. Um, 
I, you, did you do the math on the 170 day to that? I, I, I was trying to get to there yeah, because I, that's uh, without the concession stand. Yeah, that's and, what I, got uh, if, I remember about. Donnie saying something about the installation of the goal post, but I don't remember him saying what the goal posts themselves were as the 6,000. 6, I thought that was the installation for them. We'll just put two the yeah. Fifty-eight ninety-nine. The post themselves. That's what I thought you said. Install. Uh, what about the post? Because we've been doing everything else, but giving us the material price and then the installation price. The old posts are uh, fifty-eight ninety-nine. The 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 posts themselves are fifty-eight. That's just the post. We could do previous things. And how much is it putting them up, director? Excuse me. How much is it putting them up? It doesn't say. It says it's on a separate sheet, but I don't see it here. Um, What's the date on those estimates? Yeah, here it is. Thirty-eight seventy-five for installation. Yes. Go post. Yes. Yes. Not three kids. Kind of, that's, that's a rough rough there. Another one for digging the holes, installation, and uh, putting up the scoreboards and stuff. Ninety-seven fifty. What's the date on those? Uh, Sixty-eight ninety-nine. Yeah, that's what that is. Sixty-eight ninety-nine. Yeah, that's what that is. 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 Yeah, Plus uh, 105,000 for the whatever that was. I don't know. Uh, sure it Anyone else? Now, keep in mind, we we don't have any concrete idea of what these are going to cost. All these items would have to be bidded. Is that not right, Mr. Marlowe? Without a doubt. And would an architect have to be involved? Without a doubt. Yeah. So really, if we approve something without knowing what we're going to spend fully, is that the correct way of? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what an action at this point would do because you could approve this, and from where I'm sitting, the only thing that you would have would be that the board approved doing this, and then you'd, somebody would have to then have a motion to. Uh, hire an architect to, to design the stuff and authorize it to go out to bid and then once the bids came back you'd have to evaluate the bids and then once you got to there you have to appropriate money to to cover it if you want to go forward. Uh, if SARS is just trying to get the ball rolling there's nothing wrong with this action taking place but re in order for anything to be actually done you'd have to have a motion to, uh, to hire an architect firm and uh, get your uh, uh, specs and plans done so that we could then have an action by the board to authorize it to go to bid. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. with all these, this list right here and the, the bids that he already has, they're all bids to me. Yes. You know, they're probably even a lot higher now than they yes, were then. So if we, if somebody makes a motion, to put these out for bids, then we come back and we maybe can vote on one or two or we have to vote on the whole group or have a bid. Well, that... Yeah, I know. The Sheriff's Guild Committee looked into this? Or? Not the current one. I don't think so. I think I think they should be... You know, of course, I want the kids to have what they deserve, you know, but I think this is a lot of money to not know where it's coming from. How many said this one coming? This was just a one company. Give us a quick. <laughs> oh, we're not. Uh, we've done this. Uh, nobody even mentioned any money down there at uh, middle school when we put the three hundred eighty-six thousand dollars for the bleachers and press box. The money didn't even come up. It wasn't even said that's a lot of money. But now, since it's on Delco, that's a lot of money to spend. That's not the reason I said that's, that. Well, ain't got I nothing to do with Delco. I know it's a lot of money, but it's not for me, it's for the kids over there. Well, what I was saying is these bids are old bids, and they need to go back up again to see what the price, the current price is. I understand that. I understand that. But last month, we bet we voted on $107,000 for part of the bleachers up there at high school. There wasn't no question as to where the money was coming from. It was already there. When I asked for something over our jail code, we've got to find out. It's too much money. And when that's I, not when right. I, when I vote, I don't base my vote on 
this side of the mountain or the other side of the mountain. I'll always try to keep the kids at heart. What I, I don't know. Right. Hey, where do they play ball at now, Sarge? They play at the high school. At the high school? Yeah. They play there like on Thursday night? Thursday night. Okay. So that's a nice place there, is it not? Yeah, is it a nice, nice field? It, it probably could use some bleachers, new bleachers on we one side or another. They got new bleachers on, not on the opposite they're side, do they? Side, on the opposite side, they're bad, aren't yeah. they? Okay, sir. Well, I mean, I don't know. I was just thinking there. We're getting close to budget time. If we could, if we could get down, if we could get Mr. Poston to look at some of the the cost of what we're actually at, asking for, and maybe see if there's a way we can find funds in next year's budget. We don't have capital outlay right now to cover that. Do we? You've got a hundred ninety thousand dollars, I think, on the report. So, and I tell you, that's not been specifically designated to carry you through the rest of the, right. the current year. The uh, if, if you're going to cover this, then what I would make as your recommendation to step one, Sarge, is why don't you make a motion to uh, hire an architect and authorize these bids, these things to go out for bid. Then you have at least got your foot in the door where that you'll have the plans and specs done and you'll have a solicitation authorized by the board to be performed and then you'll know and then we can make uh, at least legitimate discussion about whether the board wants to go. You're going to have to get them to go through step number one, which I think is what you're trying to do, and that is to authorize these things to go to bid. That's the very first step. So that's what I would do as opposed to uh, approve this. I would get them to approve the authorizing to go to bid. Uh, that would be your best move. Is there move. any way we can ask an architect to review this and give us an estimated amount? Absolutely. Yeah, without even doing a lot of work. Yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. Good, point. Good, good idea. idea. You to do that. Good yes. idea. Without. That, Yes. Yeah, that would absolutely do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll make that in form of a motion. Is there a second? No, I'll second it. Okay, we got the wording right, Madam Clerk. We're, gonna, we're asking the for architect cost estimate. for a cost estimate. Yeah. We're not hiring. Yeah, cost yeah, estimate. Cost get it. Yes. Yes. Just get the ball rolling. Yeah. 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 That's a good first step. Yeah. yeah. So we're, this is a non That's a good out of one. pocket right. solution to get the ball going. Right. Yes. Yeah, it'll, it'll cost you a little bit of money for an architect, but you're talking very small amount of money to get them to do a price estimate for you. Nothing that's going to be any real money. So you're not, yeah, it's a, essentially a zero cost. No. Well, you're only talking a couple thousand dollars. At most, yes. Yeah. At the most. Is, is everybody okay? Ready? Yeah, Any more discussion? Well, let's I proceed to vote. Does everybody know what they're voting on? <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you... Write the motion out. Who's the second record? Yeah, who was the second? I did. Danny Wilson. Okay, this is for to let will you have her to read the motion. For an art for the architect to do a cost estimate. For Jellico Elementary. For uh, restroom concession stand bleachers and press box at Jellico Elementary. Okay. School. Is everybody clear? Let's proceed to vote. Any member wish to change their vote? Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Orrick, yes. Parker, yes. Rutherford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion, yes. I do want to say that I, I do kind of resent the fact of kind of being accused of being against somebody because it's on one side of the mountain. I do resent that. So I just want that out there. Thank you, Mr. Parker. The uh, item for action, F. Aspen Student Management, Mr. Scannis. I've got y'all a packet of information here. The state, uh, they took this all out for bid, then they turned around and the lawyer said that wasn't good enough to bid, so they, they went back and rebid it. And they have five bidders on the state for a student manager package. Uh, Agent Point was one, uh, STI, Aspen, uh, Skyward, uh, just the pop press. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. 
Did you recommend this deck? Yeah, I'm gonna, we have to go through the process of why we recommended it. We had all the, we called in all the schools to come in and send rec, uh, people in there uh, and look at the product, uh, how it compared to STAR. So they evaluated. Uh, we went to Hawkins County to actually just look to see how all five of them compared. We looked at all of them. And one vendor wanted us to do all the work and get the money. The state is going to charge the vendors were $4.90 per ADM up to $5.35 per ADM. The state is only going to pick up $2.55 of that. So the balance is going to come back to the uh, to the local board. Uh, and that's $2, well the one that we selected is $2.35 uh, per per student. Uh, so we've got 6,000 students. It's that whatever our ADM is, that's what we're going to pay. Gotcha. The only thing we're going to have to do is for the next two years, well, the cost to transfer over is about forty-five thousand uh, dollars. They are willing to do it over a two-year period. Wait till our budget is approved, and the first payment won't be due till October thirty-first of this coming year. It gives us plenty of time to get the budget approved for this because it is not in our current budget. And then the next year it'll be due uh, in August after the budget's passed. Um, if you when you go through this look, I've got all the vendors how much they charged. Uh, the first one, uh, Pearson bought out Star. Their first vendor, they, they wanted to charge us from the time we enrolled through June 30th, which you've already paid. They kept changing the thing. They are not completely web-based. They still have Java. Anybody's talked to anybody at school where the star is locking up, it's all Java applets. Their grade book is based on Java, so we kind of went away from them. They were at the same price as what Aspen that we chose. We finally got down to two vendors, which was Aspen and Skyward. Um, Scott County and Morgan County went with uh, Power School, which is Pearson. Anderson County, Loudoun, Lenore City, they went with Skyward. Uh, Clinton City, Knox County, Jefferson County, and Claiborne County all went with Aspen. So all the groups right around here, it's, it's kind of a mixture of what was good for everybody. Uh, Aspen, in there it shows what all that they will cover. Uh, but Aspen, over the next two years, they will, or over the first year, they'll give us what they call 50 customizable hours. So if there's a certain thing that we need, they will customize the program for us. But also with Aspen, anybody in the, the country that has Aspen that has already developed this report, we can get that report from them and just make some modifications for our own use. Uh, we've had some meetings with them to kind of get the, the layout of what we need. And like I said, we've had all the, the people that deal with STAR in the schools involved with it. So they're, they're actually the ones that make the decision. You'll see in here that Skyward and Aspen were real close. The majority selected uh, Aspen, and it is the lowest cost that we have. So if the board would uh, okay this as part of the recommendation so that we can approve the uh, Aspen and continue on from that point to transfer over. Sure yes, it is. Mr. Poston. Opposed to the yeah. pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion we approve that. Is there a second? I second. Any further discussion? Let's proceed to vote. Any member wishes to change their vote? <coughs> Madam Clerk, reveal the vote. Miller, yes. Verge, yes. Collins, yes. Craigmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Warwick, yes. Parker, yes. Brunsford, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion passed. Thank you. No items for discussion. Uh, discuss legal matters. Okay, thank you. I recognize school board members. Mr. Collins. I don't have one thing, uh, Mr. Boston. Whatever you do uh, improve the school and the grade on children, I'll support you all the way. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Mr. Lawson. Uh, I, I went to the chair and student with the principal the question. Uh, she needed some extra janitorial supplies. I wonder if any of the other schools are running short. They do a good job keeping the schools clean and the floors waxed and so on. And, uh, I would like for uh, the central office or whoever's in charge of maintenance to talk with the principals and try to help them out and get whatever materials they need to keep their schools in the shape that we want them. So I, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Lawson, Mr. Hill. Uh, 
Uh, yes, we talked a lot about the grades and stuff of our students are going up and stuff. It, 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 I know it all comes to teachers and stuff like that, but you really want to see graduation go up and grades go up? Put uniforms in the school. It's a known fact that when they went to uniforms, all school grades go up, attendance goes up, bullying goes down. I'm a strong supporter of this. I just want to let it be known. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Motion to adjourn. <coughs>